Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we're taking a look at our GLE AMG 43 after 10 months of ownership. So we're almost on the uh, one year ownership mark. And I'm gonna go over here what I think about how it drives still. It is a little dirty, we did get some rain. How it uh, has lasted us, how the interior looks. And uh, we're gonna put it into Sport Plus. And as you can see, some of the features of the vehicle, it will lower here as it does right now. And uh, the exhaust opens up and it makes it a little bit more fun to drive. But enough of that. So 10 months of the GLE, how has it done? Well, let's open it up and take a look here. So uh, our GLE has been perfect for us for towing for storage and uh you know towing the dog around shopping anything like that uh, my girlfriend's been very happy with it if i'm not using my jeep srt to tow i know i can tow 7200 pounds with this amg gle and uh really it, it kind of fits that middle ground of a of a you know comfortable cruiser of a large suv and a sporty car it really does that very well and uh, i've driven the newer amgs and i have to say this does a good job at being uh, a, a true do it all car there's not a lot of the fancy technology that you get with the newer vehicles now being a 2017 and it just kind of does its job and it does its job very well there's no frills to it there's no uh no ups and downs it's just a very good overall vehicle so with that being said we're gonna hop in go for a little drive and show you all the all the little features and thrills of the amg gle so looking at the back seat here you can see sorry about that i just vacuumed this car out two a week ago and it's dirty but uh, I do need to clean it again. You can see it with this GLE here, you get heated rear seats, uh, tri-zone for the back. You get a little bit of uh, storage back here as well. And it's overall just a very comfortable place to spend time. Along with it here, you do get the uh, Harman Kardon Logic 7 sound system, which is a 17 piece unit. And as we turn the system on you can see it does start up with amg and as we get moving here i do want to show you this though we do get a 360 degree camera with this model which is pretty sweet some of them don't come with this and this was optioned out with that now brand new this vehicle was eighty three thousand dollars which is crazy to me that somebody would spend that much money on the vehicle but they did and uh it's very fun like i said it's very fun to drive so here's where the fun happens with the vehicle um in it is a nine speed uh amg enhanced transmission and with it comes the three liter v6 twin turbo with 365 horsepower and almost 400 pound feet of torque <laughs> it's pretty effortless power too and uh, one thing I like about this engine specifically is that it gives you V6 power and not a lot of turbo lag even though it is a cold V configuration engine so uh, I've test drove the new models and yes the inline six with the hybridization is nice but what you don't get is just that if I dare say it, that good old fashioned twin turbo V6 um, that you just really don't even see anymore. But overall, it's very fun to drive. You can tell the weight of this vehicle because it is 50, 53 ish hundred pounds. You know, even in sport mode, the ride is, well, it is stiff. It's still pretty supple. There is a ton of body roll with this, but overall it's, it's, you know a fun car to drive and it gives you some pretty pretty fair dynamics
but it is fairly fun to drive. <laughs> oh my gosh. These roads are so bumpy, my camera can't even stay in place. And in Wisconsin, these are the kind of roads we have. They're not good. But now if you uh, essentially put this car into comfort mode, again, all of the bumps basically disappear. And all you can feel is the tires bouncing and that's it. That's what's so great about this vehicle is, is it can do everything. And, and that I respect Mercedes for. Mercedes is the best at that. You know, a lot of today's cars, and this is an older car, but a lot of today, this is, this car, before I get off track here, this car is kind of the beginning stages of Mercedes releasing that 43 or 35, that 53 AMG line, where it's not a full-fledged AMG, but there's just enough there to where it does comfort well, it does sport well, and you know it does everything in between very, very, very well. And that was, in my opinion, when Mercedes was at its best in terms of reliability, comfort, driving, um, even though yes, this is very, very, very technologically advanced still, it was in its infant stages in terms of tech, which is great, less stuff to go wrong essentially. And, and now today, these vehicles are, even in the 63 series, they're trying to do everything. And that's gotten worse in my opinion. You know, hybridization along with inline six or V8 power or inline four, cylinder power you know just battery packs with with engines everything has gotten so much more complicated in all the different drive modes this is there to give me sport plus sport and comfort mode and that's it you know you get snow mode and individual mode as well but essentially at the end of the day if i want to have fun and put this in the sport plus i can do that which is what i want out of a vehicle it's great it really is so um, let's get to the part here after 10 months of ownership, what we have had to do. So first of all here, again, sorry about the camera. First of all, this did get new brakes. So pads, rotors, um, et cetera, new tires as well, and then spark plugs. So that was something that did get done when we bought the vehicle. Um, that was no cost at the dealership. So next after that, we, we did an oil change on it, everything was fine, but they did find uh, the timing valve, both covers needed to be resealed. So that needed to be done while they were in there. That cost was about 1,700. While they were in there, the uh, gasket area needed to be resealed as well as that was leaking oil so um that was 2200 bucks that was a lot of money so it's so fun to drive <laughs> essentially we just put four thousand dollars into this vehicle to have some resealing done on the engine the labor was the majority of that. Of course, the parts was about a thousand. The labor was, oh shoot, around twenty-five hundred-ish dollars somewhere in there. So it was a lot of money to have this done, have that work done. Again, the timing covers needed to be resealed, both side and uh, the right side gasket. So the right side, the head gasket area needed to be resealed as well and I did go in depth on a video about this in my previous videos so you can see that there I, I know I'm not getting the information correct I apologize but that was a ton of money after 10 months only 10 months of ownership and it's my fault for not getting the extended warranty on the vehicle I should have got the extended warranty and again I made a video on that as well as to why you should 
if you buy a German car, no matter the spec of it, get an extended warranty on your vehicle. There's just too much stuff that can go wrong. And none of that was electrical. That was just all engine related. So it's pretty frustrating to me, you know, to stick that much money into it and have none of the electrical go wrong. And now again, I'm taking a risk at not getting the extended warranty. Um, and just in case some electrical stuff goes on, we're gonna keep this tow around 100,000 miles and then get rid of it, get something else, hopefully have it last a little bit longer without worry. And if we do, for some reason, go German again to get another GLE, either a 43 or a 53, we're going to get the extended warranty on it. That's a must. So, that was kind of my, excuse me. Now, if that weren't to happen, all we would have had was about 250 bucks in for oil change, and that was it. Otherwise, the service has been good. I mean, it's been a reliable vehicle. This has never left me stranded, and even if we weren't to get those two things done, we could have still driven this. It wouldn't have been a big issue, but that stuff needs to be done so you don't end up stranded. I mean, I could have probably let that go for, for a long time and I wouldn't have any issue with it, but being a German car, it needed to be done. Um, you just can't, you essentially can't, uh, you can't mess around with that stuff when it comes to these German cars. It's just, it's too much fun. Even compared to my Jeep SRT, this is this is pretty fun. It's not as fun to drive as that, but it's very, very fun. Um, so anyway, moving on past the reli reliability part, I wanna talk about some features in here. So one thing this does have is nose lift on it or just vehicle raise. I had an E550 that had that as well, but this has it. Um, and, and that's nice for off-roading. A lot of people, you know, push these off as just street cars, but honestly, you can off-road with this fairly easy. I mean, there is, there's raising options here for the vehicle. You can raise it up a few more inches. You can control the speed as if you were going downhill. Um, that is pretty cool as well. Um, and you can control your gears, you can individualize your driving experience. I mean, there's a lot you can do. There's a lot of capability with this vehicle and, you know, coming out as an ML platform way, way, way back in the day, that was kind of designed to be a safari car. That was designed to be an off-road cruiser as well as an on-road cruiser. So there's a lot of capability to this that ultimately made my girlfriend want to buy the vehicle because it's safe, it can have a lot of capability, it can tow, it can be fun. I mean, really, this is kind of the ultimate do-everything car. And for that reason, that's why she wanted to buy it. Uh, you know, this has adaptive cruise control. This has lane, lane assist. I mean, I could take my hands off the wheel right now and put the vehicle at cruise mode at 64 miles an hour, take my hands off, and it will drive itself for that little bit of period until it tells me to put my hands back on the wheel, which is pretty cool. It's a pretty advanced system for 2017. I do appreciate that a lot. Um, again, the infotainment is older. That's okay with me. Um, it, it, again, it's very similar to my E550, my 2011 E550 that I had. I appreciate the older system. I've been in the newer vehicles. I don't like how much it has to do with screens and screen this, screen that. There's so many goddamn screens now that the buttons are being essentially pushed away, which suck. I like buttons, I like physical buttons. It's it's nice to be able to be analog with your car. And I know it's only a button, but to feel, you know, some sort of, some sort of connectedness with your car is nice. Hit a high speed there, I really did. But uh, 
this car is is really just fantastic. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so with that being said, guys, you know, there's other little features, heated heated cup holders, cooled cup holders. I still don't get a heated steering wheel in here. Um, just some other cool stuff, and I've gone in depth as well on this vehicle in my other videos. So with that being said, guys, that's my 10-month ownership review of this vehicle. I love it. Uh, she loves it. it it's overall, it, it's been a great vehicle for us besides the fact that we had to pay that much in dealership cost. Oh, it, it's just that that sours your taste of a vehicle very, very fast. So with that being said, guys, like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next episode.